then we move on onto this random thing so this track courtesy of this guy called snot came out recently featuring asap rocky and it happens to be actually one of the most probably the best asap rocky features i've seen, heard in a while he hasn't necessarily been putting out a lot of material clearly because he's you know he's been busy with other things starting a family with rihanna probably being one and generally it feels like he's maybe not as inspired as he was previously i don't know what's happening it just seems to be a bit of a weird time artistically um maybe some people would accuse him of falling off i don't think so i still think he has the ability to put together a really cohesive um project regardless of what sound direction because that's the thing with him he's so versatile asap rocky that he can go in any direction and probably um do a fairly decent job but i thought in terms of just straight rapping ability and coming in and delivering a massive or a really kind of replay worthy verse i thought this track with snot called dojo was really really good but there's one thing that obviously sticks out it's called dojo or she obviously named after the artist dojo cat and snot seems to have a bit of an infatuation with her I understand she's obviously a, a very attractive girl but it got me thinking about this line because I think supposedly she's reacted not that great to it you know maybe jokingly or not jokingly where he says in the chorus I fuck that bitch named Doja Cat pull up in a scat pack now the common assertion around town is that most likely Doja Cat isn't a fan of the niggas, right? That's supposedly what the theory goes around there, right? She doesn't really like them too tough. If I'm not mistaken, her partner at the moment is some white dude, I'm pretty sure, um, with long hair. I'm not sure if he's a producer or if he's just somebody that she's met back in the day. doesn't necessarily matter. But for whatever reason, that's the narrative around her name. That might have to do also in part with, you know, that whole chat room thing that she was involved in where people try to cancel her, where she was allegedly in a chat room full of like right wingers sharing feet pics and just being naughty and cute and whatnot. I don't know. Who knows what it is? And just being a troll or being a shit person. We don't know. We don't care. She somehow was able to kind of skirt over that in a good way and has somehow been able to rescue her career which has been good um she survived many things actually considering if you think about her kind of you know patchiness in terms of that you know doing what's the, i think her biggest track was produced by dr luke who was involved in the abuse thing with kesha and stuff like she's been able to kind of dope bob and weave a few things um but for whatever reason that whole thing about her not liking black dudes or something that's always stuck and i guess people were then surprised when people were trying to link her with french montana and whatnot because of the pictures that got out of them on holiday but supposedly there was you know they're just innocently hanging out we don't know the truth about that and i necessarily don't really care but i was just thinking in general about this idea that people just don't fuck with certain races in just in general it's always been weird to me personally because i'm somebody who had gone through a really weird phase in terms of how I viewed that thing and how it basically affected me and my kind of you know journey for the most part especially where I grew up the school I went to or the primary school I went to was in a very you would say somewhat middle class community even though we weren't middle class so my family we just happened to be there because we had a council house which was basically subsidized housing and we actually had a we actually lived in a semi detached home which was nonsense i think we just got lucky in that regard but we happened to be a poor family living in a fairly affluent area and then i went to a school that was incredibly mixed but also predominantly white but then i also had a class that was mostly black so it was a really strange mix-up and then i think the first girl i had a real crush on was this black girl called jennifer who I think now, when last time I checked, maybe it was 10 years ago, I might have checked up on this one time on social media, and she was just smashing it, right? She was just, I think she had like a kid, this high-flying executive husband, she lived in a mad place. She just looked like she was, she had her life in order. I remember that, have you ever had that thing where it happens where you search up somebody that you used to go to school with, and then they're doing so well that it bums you out about your own life that you just forget about it. You kind of retcon it. That's what I did. So I found that I think I found her somewhere. I don't know where I found her. And then her life looked so amazing. And it made me so sad about how crappy my life was. Because I think at the time I was working as a sales assistant. I don't know where I was in some shop, right? So I was like making like £19,000 a year. And this girl who was like, you know, we knew each other when we were younger, was clearly earning like 100K plus. Like she looked, she, you know, when you see someone's picture, you just, she did, she just looked expensive. I was like, ugh. So that was my first crush, right? And of course, nothing happened. Even back then, she knew I was a, I was a loser. <laughs> so that nothing happened there. And then that was sort of my first thing. So I, again, I never really had the whole black white thing. I didn't really give a shit. 
then I guess when I got older, especially when I went into my teenage years, especially when grime and garage was becoming a thing, I loved all the music, don't get me wrong, but I also was very eclectic in my music taste. I'd go to like metal shows, I'd go to indie shows, just because I liked the music, because there was anything else, I just liked listening to it. And it might have to do with the fact that I was skateboarding when I was younger, so maybe the music I was listening to was kind of influenced through skateboarding videos, because they usually have great music and very varied in terms of genres and whatnot. Um, you know, I discovered the Smiths because of skateboarding, basically all those kind of things, like even Deftones I can think of, maybe I discovered through there. Um, stuff like Red Hill Chili Peppers, like, you know, those kind of stuffs, right? And because of that, I guess it led me to present myself in a certain way. And at that particular time, for whatever reason, the black kid that presented themselves in a way where I was wearing like studded, you know, wrist bands and like nylon, you know, shiny flipping combat pants looking. Yeah, yeah, I just looked, I looked insane with my skateboard on the arm. I looked fucking nuts. Most black girls in my area just didn't like the what I was presenting at. So I was, I was kind of limited in my options and I didn't really get any love from that scene. And then as soon as I got older and things, or as soon as I got a little bit older than that, maybe 16, 18, maybe 16, 18 maybe here yes, maybe about 16 to 21 suddenly then i think there was a period maybe when star trek or pharrell started coming on the scene and then things started to change where that kind of aesthetic became a thing now right maybe kid cuddy a bit later on but it became like a thing that kind of alternative looking black dude became like a thing and it became in vogue and then suddenly the same girls that were kind of writing me off were now suddenly interested in, to, in, to, in me again which was obviously nice because you know who doesn't want to have a bit of attention from people especially ones that you want to be have attention on you but it was always a little bit up and down do you know what I mean it was always a bit up and down now it's obviously you know whatever but it was always a bit up and down in that regard but I never at one time during that whole period told myself okay I'm only gonna go for this race or that race it was never a thing like that and I guess it's different for boys because for boys we're usually the ones starving right we're usually the ones devoid of options we just have to take what's given to us like <laughs> we don't have the tra the chance to pick but in general I never really writ anybody off in terms of a, a you know in terms of your race like color creed it didn't really matter to me as long as we vibed and connected now again I was one of those weirdos where especially when I was younger I always kind of opted for the oh, if we vibe, I'm down more so than just you being hot. And I guess most of it had to do it because I was always, I always thought my best game was in person. Like, you know, if as long as I can get around you, maybe I'd have an opportunity because I could be funny and stuff and whatnot. But when it came to just doing straight looks from afar, maybe I wouldn't win because someone would be like, nah, I don't like his face. I don't like his head. <laughs> I mean, like it, it's easy to kind of like point out my flaws from afar. But once we get in close and we're kind of talking and jiving, maybe my personality can maybe win you over. Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. But it just made me, it just made me think when I listened to this track thinking, huh, I wonder if that is a thing where she just generally has a thing where she just doesn't fuck with certain races. And I wonder if people, because I'm sure people are like that in the world. Or in general, I'm sure people listen to this all like that too, where they say I'm, I would never date a certain race. But for whatever reason, why is it such a bad thing? Why do people think it's a bad? Like, again, I don't do it because I think that's stupid. I would never write off an entire group of females just because they don't have purpose to have the shape share, share the same color skin as I do. But I know some people have that preference, and when they voice it, people get really angry, and I don't really get it. If it is a preference and it's something that they like, why does it make you upset? They're not gonna bang you, in it? it doesn't matter really. But for every reason, it seems to really push people's buttons. I guess because in some ways, if you're black, especially and you say I don't like black girls, you sound like you're self-hating. And I guess same thing if you're white and you say that it sounds like you're it sounds like you're writing off your own race, and people get really, you know, what you think called. They get uh, really defensive about that sort of thing. I can understand it, or maybe it makes them view themselves a bit differently. Who knows really what the case is? But I just saw that line and I thought to myself. I wonder if that would offend her because of course you know snot is clearly a black dude and if she would want to set the record straight like nah nigga i would never fuck you i mean that's never happening <laughs> and you know why <laughs> you know what i mean i wonder if that would be a thing that she would say or if it just or or also i wonder if this it'll be interesting too if like another artist who's not black happens to put a line in his song about her that's maybe insinuates that something happened which have the same reaction or is it just her having that reaction like none let's sit the record straight don't put a body on me that i didn't claim that kind of thing i don't really know who knows who knows what the thing is maybe i'm making a mountain out of a molehill but you know this is what podcasting is you make a mountain out of a molehill for the entertainment of your viewing public that's what you do